This tutorial shows the basics of how to connect the Jasper Port server to data and perform ad hoc analysis. Three simple steps are covered in this video. The first step is to define your data source to the Jasper Port server. Next, you'll need to create a domain. This is Jaspersoft's metadata layer that provides a range of features to prepare your data as a subject matter data source for use by end users. Once you have a domain, it can be used for ad hoc analysis or creating dashboards. Okay, let's start by creating a data source from the home page. The Jasper Report server supports a number of data source types, as can be seen in this drop list. We'll use a JDBC connection to point to one of the sample databases that are installed with the server. The UI lets me select a particular JDBC driver. The server comes with a predefined set of drivers. You can also add additional drivers as needed by selecting the Add Driver button and providing the location of your driver. In our case, we'll use the Postgres driver to point to sample data. Depending on the data source, certain database connection information is required. For JDBC, this is the host name, port number, and database name, along with access credentials. The UI provides a Test Connect button to verify that the server can see the data source. The data source definition is saved to the server, where it can be used by one or more domains. The Jasper Report server has a folder structure that makes it easy to organize content. I see the available folders based on my security access control. I can then see the newly created data source appear in the folder list. Next, we'll create a domain by selecting the Create Domain item from the main menu. I'll use the default name that was created by the server and enter a description. I'll also select a server location for my domain and define the data source. Then use the Create option to define the data set that I want to make available for analysis. The database source contains multiple schemas. Here I select the public schema, where I then see a list of all tables. I select specific tables that I want to make available for analysis. Here I select a table that contains sales information. The Domain Designer UI contains a series of tabs that define advanced field selection, calculation, and filtering settings. For this basic tutorial, we'll skip some of these settings and go to the Display tab. The Display tab lets you select which fields are available for analysis. By clicking on items, you can remove them from being viewed, and if need be, you can still bring them back in later to the display list. A domain also lets you set properties for each field that adds value for users. For example, I can edit a name that the user sees to a more user-friendly label and set other attributes, such as default data formats and summary calculation methods. I can also define whether a field is a measure or dimension field, which affects how data is represented in visualizations. Measures typically contain numeric data that can be aggregated in cross-tab fashion. I'll also change the summary calculation for this ID field to a distinct count. The system will scan fields and try to determine whether a field should be assigned as a measure. In some cases, an ID type field may be identified as a measure when it should really be a dimension field. I'll change the ID fields accordingly. Once I'm done with my display settings, I click OK and then submit the domain to the server and now it is available for ad hoc analysis and dashboarding. From the main create menu, I'll select ad hoc view. The UI brings up a list of data that is available based on my security access control to the server. I can also search for a source name to quickly find content. In this case, I'll select the newly created domain. One of the benefits of domains is that source data can be organized into multiple sets. This domain contains just the one set we've created. I'll select that set and then use the ad hoc view to see data. I can see all fields and measures that are available per the domain setup. Then select one or more items and drag them onto the layout into column or row group locations. The results are then displayed, in this case the aggregated measure values for the entire data set. Then by dragging other fields into the display, you can see more levels of data. In this case, data aggregated up to totals by store ID plus the grand totals. You can switch to a chart visualization through the toolbar. By default, a column chart is shown. The chart visualizer lets you zoom through various levels of data. In this basic case, you can slide between grand total values and data by store ID. The chart type can quickly be changed by selecting inline settings, where you see a palette of available chart types. 
Here we'll look at a bar chart. Once you've completed your analysis, you can optionally save your view to a server folder where you and others with proper security access can see it. I can then return to the home page by selecting the home button from the main menu. Next, take a look at the ad hoc view tutorial for a deeper look at how to create multi-level visualizations with filtering and advanced calculations. You should also take a look at the domains video to see how more advanced metadata properties such as data source joins can be defined.